Hello, Elizabeth Berry here, and I am reminding you to get out of your own way and to go beyond ego to live authentically as you are. Um, I'm so grateful to share some time with you. Over the next several weeks, I have a video series that I'm going to be providing for you every single day um, based upon my new book and the workshop that I'm providing. My new book is called The Kind Communicator. If you don't have it, I suggest that you pick up a copy. It's available on Amazon, iBooks, and Kindle. And the workshops that I'm providing are across the United States at small business offices, to yoga studios, to acupuncture studios, to schools and universities, as well as corporate events and um, corporate corporations. And uh, at my last uh, workshop, I had some colleagues put down, as soon as they walked in, they got a white sheet of paper like this. And I said, will you please share your current you're the most current um, obstacle that you're having trouble communicating with, and I would provide uh, some advice and feedback. And I have a bunch of these here, and they were all so beautiful. So I'm so grateful for the vulnerability and the openness of the <clears throat> anonymous request. So I'm just going to start uh, this new video series off with the first one that says, uh, this is obviously a relationship thing. It's not a business thing, but it could be It could be handled in business. I, But this is more relationship wise. I want to talk more. More was emphasized with an underline and all caps. Uh, but he tends to hold things in. I'm going to repeat it. I want to talk more, but he tends to hold things in. Okay, so um, I have learned a lot about relationships being in a tumultuous one uh, that I was thought was amazing, but really wasn't. And uh, one of the, the tips that I would do is to have once a month table sessions. You can call it whatever it is that you want to call it, but I would have a once a month sit down where you put it on the calendar and you can actually talk about things that might be hindering you. Because if you're living in a home with someone or you're dating someone and you want to talk more and they're not talking, you feel like held back and you're just probably wanting to be like, why don't you talk to me? And that person probably just doesn't understand that you want more from from him or her. And I think that it, it, it the, uh, the point of the book is about, it's not about being nice. <laughs> kind communication is about respect and integrity, respect for yourself, respecting yourself enough to ask for what you desire and not um, controlling the outcome, not forcing the outcome, but being curious about what could be with the outcome. So once a month, I would suggest having a table session where you come together for an hour or so at, at night, maybe set up some candles. You could do it naked. You could do it um, in like fun PJs. You can make your own t-shirts that say like table sessions or let's talk or something cool like that to ease the tension of whatever it is that you're both having trouble with communicating and, um, you know, if the candles are there, you can have like music on. I have meditation music going on in the background. Um, but you can have like a feather or a, a rock. I have a lot of um, spiritual rocks, but everyone, the person who has the rock can speak and speak kindly. Um, never point, never blame, never judge, but use those table sessions once a month as an opportunity to share what's inside of you and become curious about something that's going on with your partner or allow your partner to be curious about what you're needing or desiring because if we don't talk about it and we just get frustrated and we just think in our minds that they don't want to talk to us or they have nothing to say, maybe they actually do have something to say. Um, the other thing is acceptance of the relationship. Relationships are a give and take and we have to accept that we've married this person or we're in a relationship with this person and we might be the talkative Susie and they might be like the quiet mouse and, and that's okay we have to find acceptance for that um, the other thing is it's important to ask for what you want we allow things and when we allow them to happen over time we carry our own tensions we carry these burdens and um, it ultimately leads to uh, a, a hurt heart uh, it, it leads to resentment in our minds because we start to blame and judge and think, well, he doesn't talk to me. Well, did you ever think, like, did you ask him uh, what's on his mind? Uh, did you ask him to learn more about what your needs and desires are? And sometimes we, ha we are the ones that are at fault. We are the ones that have to look within and say, did I even voice that I, I, I want to talk to him more? I, I want him to listen to me. 
Um, so, you know, acceptance and asking for what you want are truly important. Finding that middle ground and understanding of your relationship and who you are versus who they are is something that's so valuable and important, um, not only for your relationship in, in the present, but in the future, because your expectations are not going to be let down because you're understanding and accepting and finding that middle ground of, okay, this is who we are. How can we get better? Taking it back to those table moments where you can have a feather or have a rock and it, the person with the rock speaks and the other person cannot speak or cannot talk over the person with the rock. So you're really getting to an opening and a soul connection with another person that you might not have done before in a healthy situation. You know, the TV's probably on or you're at a restaurant and you're having wine and you know, all of a sudden emotions get the best of you and you say the wrong things. And that's why these table moments are so important for learning the needs and wants of our lovers. Uh, I definitely um, suggest getting the seven love languages. I think it's seven, five love languages. I think it's five. Five love languages. Uh, I would read it out loud with your partner. I'm just an old soul. You don't have to do that. Maybe you both will read it, but reading it out loud will allow you to kind of come together and learn what your love languages are so you can accept the other person for who they are and they can accept you for who you are. Uh, that's a great book. Um, again, I, shut the TV off. Uh, shut the TV off. Don't try to push or shove or demand or request something or try to talk to someone when there's like a TV on and, and you're trying to get in their way of watching sports or doing something else. It's just, it has to be a quiet time. Um, but most importantly, if, if you want to talk more and he tends to hold things in, have you ever tried to ask him what's in his mind? Um, ask him what he likes to talk about? It's an opportunity to share a story or to get inside that person's mind. Um, sometimes I think the quietest people are the ones that have something to say, but we're just never asked. You know, one of the most important things about being a business coach is that I get to talk to people that aren't really asked, how was your day? How do you feel? And they're there are some of them can come off really quiet, but as soon as I get in a session with them, they're like chatty Kathy. We're not often asked how we feel, what we're curious about, what we want to talk about. So um, instead of forcing the things that you want to say on someone who doesn't speak so much, maybe try to get that two-way conversation going by asking them what they're curious about or what they're feeling or how, how they're feeling about something or or ask them what they like to talk about. Um, it could be turtles. <laughs> it could be the sun. It could be sports. It could be whatever. But give them the chance to shine in their own light, which also provides um, confidence and breath and equanimity and a channeling to really speak their mind. Because I think that a lot of a lot of times, I'm not the person who is, remains quiet, <laughs> uh, but I think that a lot of times people often remain quiet because they they don't know how to respond to someone who's maybe too chatty or too, they're turned off by it. So I think you have to kind of like break down that wall a little bit and get curious and ask them. And most importantly, uh, accept that you cannot change them or try not to change them and love them for who they are. I often, um, I'm ten, I tend to uh, be attracted to the quieter types because I don't know how to be quiet. <laughs> I mean, I do, I like being quiet by myself, but I often tend to love quiet people because uh, I find them uh, that they're, they're very, uh, there's so much hidden behind that beautiful smile or eyes or soul. So um, accept and love the person for who they are. And if you wanna talk more, but they tend to hold things in, have those table moments, get curious, ask them what's on their mind, ask them to share what's important to them. And um, I'm hoping that you'll find uh, a better ground and using those table moments over months on end might, might give you a perspective that they weren't quiet at all. They just weren't being asked the right questions. So uh, I hope that you got a lot out of today's uh, video. Again, my name is Elizabeth Barry. You can find me at elizabethbarryconsulting.com. I am a wonderful business coach and consultants and I, I, I teach um, vulnerability and ego uh, and uh, it often tends to lean into uh, 
our life situations and uh, relationships and spirituality in addition to careers and work and success and profits. So um, I'll stay tuned. I'm going to be providing another video for you in my Be Kind shirt in this new series for the Kind Communicator Workshop uh, responses. <laughs> Have a good day.